Yeah. That's so hard for the I kids. Know. We just don't think Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our regular council meeting for Wednesday, October 3rd. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest regarding the items on today's agenda? Councillor Bulmer? No. Councillor Roth? No. Councillor Spoulis? No. Councillor Fielding? No. Neither do I. I have a motion moved by Councillor Roth and seconded by Councillor Bulmer that the minutes of the following meetings be adopted as written and distributed. A public meeting minutes September 13th, 2018 to 2019 user fees and charges bylaw. Public meeting minutes September 13th, 2018 building bylaw. C council meeting September 19th, 2018 and D the closed council meeting September 19th, 2018. Any discussion on those? All those in favor? That's carried. Is there any business arising from any of those minutes? None. We have no public meetings coming up. Uh, communications, compliance assessment report for Cox Constru Construction, pardon me. The Regional Waterloo, Cambridge East Water Supply Class Environmental Assessment Project File Report. We've got a couple of reports on here. Um, do we want to dig into these now? I guess so. Maybe, we, okay, we'll start with these reports. Correspondence from Golder Associates. Uh, dated September 2018 and correspondence from Hardin Environmental dated September 24th, 2018. Anything on that? Councillor Bulmer. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just want to, I, I concur with um, Hardin Environmental's concern regarding the fact we, we don't know what the existing levels of impact are because we didn't have any steady state or any pre-existing pumping data to go by. So I understand why he's looking for additional monitoring points to and I don't want to use the word hair triggers, but that we have early response to any increase impacts because we don't know how bad they could be. The, the pump test did show some impact and some potential connection mm -hmm. to the lake, and we did hear from the residents that any degradation of the lake would be, they wouldn't want to see that. So I do support that he's asking for more um, additional monitoring than is currently being proposed. Um, the other piece that I, I'm glad you mentioned was the well interference program, which uh, when this process started, I, probably eight or ten years ago, it did not include any properties across the the, um, the border, across the municipal boundary, other than those that would be required by the MOE. Um, so I'm glad that um, he's mentioned the fact that the enhanced response area might maybe more residents might want to be in that. And I expect, based on the previous discussions with the region of Waterloo, when we approached them initially to expand across the municipal boundary with that enhanced response, they were open to that. And I expect if we find out that the, the actual potential area of impact is greater with the, with the, when the monitoring gets going and the new pumping gets going, I think they'd be open to expanding that, that protective area as well. That's been our experience with them, at least. Yeah. Okay. Councilor Fielding? I don't have any further comments on that. Councillor Spoulis? Yes, uh, I, I support uh, Hardin's uh, recommendations. Uh, the only change I would suggest is if uh, you look at the excerpt I, from file report, page 59, uh, the recommendation in there is to have the uh, monitoring plans to t uh, every two years, and Hardin recommends every one year, and I agree with that. The other thing that the uh, report identifies that the quarterly data reports will be completed. Now, the next sentence goes on to say it will be available to public provided township of Pusslinch. I didn't know if it referred to the quarterly as well as the two years, but I'd like to suggest we have the quarterly as well. And also, in terms of uh, Harden, I'd like to suggest that we have Harden review the annual report, not the quarterly report, perhaps uh, for at least two years until there's a steady state and we feel comfortable that uh, there's no impact on us. So those would be my uh, suggested comments and recommendations. Yeah. Councilor Roth? Uh, my understanding is this is going to be kind of phased in and increased mm -hmm. in a period of 15 years, so we'll, we'll be monitoring for a lot longer than two years. And we'll see the increases in their takings, how it, how it may or may not affect us. So. I think that's all a good thing. Okay, the only thing I had was in the Hardin report, uh, I guess part way down where he talks about we recommend that the region, I uh, say that we would change that to request that the region 
uh, consider these things. And that was the thresholds for Puss Lynch Lake, as Councilor Bulmer talked about, and also to define the mitigative measures. And we had talked about um, just after the meeting, the last meeting that we had, about uh, annual rather than every two years as well. Um, I understand at the beginning, as you point out, um, Councilor Roth, that you know that's a long period of time. But I think the more information we have at this stage, the better off we'll be. Um, so that would be my request as well. Okay. Um, okay, it's five after, and we have a number of delegations. And first up, we have Jeff Buseman about Cox Construction. Are you going to come up and speak? <clears throat> I'm, I'm registered as a delegation more to maybe address comments for later on the agenda that is being presented, or is that, is that this? Well, they've actually put you on as a delegation, and so you've got up to 10 minutes if you'd like to make some sort of a presentation, or if you just want to answer questions, you could do that as well. But this, this uh, the, just to, to refresh the, uh, the council, this is a an application for a zone mm -hmm. change. Um, mainly, the, the extraction activity has stopped, has finished, and now they've applied for a severance, and that severance has been approved. They have uh, surrendered the license, right? Surrendered the mm -hmm. license for it. So we'd like to rezone the property from not extraction anymore, but to agricultural. And really, I think it's pretty straightforward application and so on. I'm he really here to answer questions. Okay. Councillor Bulmer, do you have any questions? Uh, no questions, thanks. Okay. Councillor Fielding? No, I, th I think it is straightforward. <laughs> Councillor Spoolis? No, it's straightforward. Thank you. Councillor Rowe? I have no questions. Yeah, I think we're fine too. Okay. So you can leave your notes there if you yeah. want, but we're going to, won't be back to you till 1.15, okay? Yeah. Oh. I have a motion moved by Councilor Roth and seconded by Councilor Bulmer that Council receives a delegation from Jeff Buseman of Van Harten Surveying, Inc., with respect to planning report, zoning bylaw amendment application D14 Cox, Cox Construction Limited, parts of lots 11 and 12, concession 4. All those in favor? That's carried. All right, back to the agenda. Item number three, compliance assessment report for the Wellington pit, lot seven and eight, concession three. Anything on that? Correspondence from Capital Paving, dated September 10th, 2018. Okay, then we'll switch over to inter intergovernmental Excuse affairs. Me, I thought we had two lower delegations. We do, but they don't start until later. They're oh, all here I, see. I, I thought there were. No, oh, okay, mine they're not right, right after the other. So we'll just have to wait. Um, Intergovernmental Affairs, AMO, the City of Toronto, about the proposed changes there, their concerns. The Wellington Dufferin Guelph Board of Health, their highlights for the month. Uh, St. Mary's, the permit to take water, a little over 23 million litres a day for 10 years. Uh, in the past, we've asked, made comments and said that we would request a five-year period. Do we yes. want to con continue that? I would suggest that, yes. Okay. Uh, Union Gas, transportation rates, they're looking at adjusting. Uh, Hamilton, their rural and urban official plan amendments. Well, yes. Just a comment. Uh, I, I discussed this with our CAO, and I understand that she would be bringing a report in uh, December with respect to our position on uh, cannabis outlets in our township. Okay. And the last one, Aurora, maintain, grow the green belt. Okay. So motion moved by Councillor Bulmer and seconded by Councillor Roth that the Intergovernmental Affairs correspondence items listed on the Council agenda for the October 3rd, 2018 Council meeting be received. All those in favour? It's carried. Allegations, reports, nothing on person. Okay. Uh, so we're under reports under Finance Department. A motion moved by Councillor Bulmer and seconded by Councillor Roth. The report FIN 2018-030 regarding the 2019 user fees and charges bylaw be received and the Council enact a bylaw to adopt the user fees and charges bylaw in accordance with the bylaw attached as Schedule A to report FIN 2018-030. Any discussion on that, Councillor Bulmer? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I just wonder, I wondered if under the payment schedules it would be possible, I'd like to consider adding um, something for you know, an, so an annual multi-day event 
like a destination event or a festivals to, to promote those kind of rentals. Um, I think right now we're treating them as if they were just a one-off, but I think we've had some very successful things in the past, and maybe we might be able to have more successful things in the future if we could have something similar to what other places do, a certain percentage down and, and the balance so many days before, as opposed to asking someone who wants to rent it for three days or two days to pay it 100% up front as if it was one of these one-off events. Because I think we'd like to see some interesting events. Imagine a could be a, a music festival wanted to use the community center or something and make it easier for them to rent it. Maybe not the first time, but certainly the, when they come back the second time, when they demonstrate this is going to be a repeatable event. Okay, let me just see if I follow. So you're saying that if we get an event coming the first time, we're talking about some sort of an event coming to the community, they want to rent the facility sometime in the future, that we use a standard procedure that we have now, but if somebody wants to get into some sort of a ongoing annual event, is that yeah. what you're... Like, so you've had, so you, every, let's say every June, there was somebody who wanted to rent it for a weekend for a festival or a craft show or a, an antique sale or whatever it was, it, sort of like a destination drawing people from quite a ways away. It's a multi-day event, um, giving them the opportunity to pay so much down in advance the year before. You know, when they book it, they pay the, a percentage up front and then the balance is due so many days before. This is consistent with other facilities. Mm -hmm. As opposed to requiring, I think if we treated them right now as the one-off thing, it's they have to pay 100% within seven days of booking it. And if it's a two or three day event, that's a, that's a big chunk of change up front, right? Um, I think there was a request um, not that long ago that council dealt with. There was a specific request, if I recall, with respect to um, crafts or pottery that was at the community oh, center, yeah, was th okay. which was proposing the same type of payment schedule, which was at that time um, we stuck with what is currently in place from a policy point of view. I'm going to suggest that if we're going to look at any type of policy changes um, at this point, then we're looking at it for a future year because we're at the point of actually... Um, there was nothing raised during the user fees public meetings right. on this, yep. and there was just a recent decision with respect to not granting that particular request within the last year. However, if council wants to direct us to look at it for a future, we can certainly do so. Okay. Councillor Fielding. Uh, yes. Um, I, I know the incident that uh, I think Councillor Palmer is working around. Uh, uh, there was quite a long letter in the Pioneer. I don't know if people had a chance to read it. I no, wish that... Per oh, I'm sorry. This way? Yeah, please. Okay. I uh, wish people had... Uh, I wish she, Mrs. Murphy had come forward to council as a presentation. I think it you know, would have been a little easier to discuss it if the, if the concern comes forward from the person as a delegation. But uh, uh, it is a shame that we, we aren't going to be having the Aberfoyle part of Potter's Market anymore, and it's now part of Guelph. So uh, I understand what you're saying. So I think it is something maybe in the future that we need to revisit and see uh, if we're deterring business or deterring things like that from coming. Uh, I, I, you know, understand that maybe it's a little too late in the process now to do that, but hopefully it can be reviewed next year. But I did have a couple of other comments on that, if I may, Mr. Mayor, or, or are we, we go just going to go around okay. first yeah, okay. and then we'll we'll go back again, Councilor Spoolis? Uh, I'm not in favor. Uh, it simply is where you draw the line. You've got people who rent it every month, type of thing, as opposed to once a year. And uh, uh, if you're extended to the people who rent it every month, every year, type of thing, all these people. Mm -hmm. are, who rent it uh, once a month will say, look, our cumulative uh, expenditure over the year is a lot more than this once a month event, uh, once a year event. So I wouldn't be in favor of it. Certainly if we can look at it next year, but uh, my position at that time it would be, I would not be in favor of it. Okay. Councilor Roth? Yeah, I think it's something we could look at for a future year. Okay. I, I tend to agree. Let's, uh, um, let's deal with this in the, while well, a new council can deal with it in a new year that maybe look at <coughs> As Councillor Bulmer says, if this is a regular ongoing thing, is there some possibility and how do other uh, municipalities treat it? Mm -hmm. And so come forward before before the public meeting for the user fee bylaw next year. Is everybody okay with that then? So at least it gets discussed and the public has some opportunity to have some input it is, uh, to it as well. Okay? Mm -hmm. Anything else, Councillor Bomer? No, that's it. Councillor Fielding, you had something uh, yeah, else? Yeah, I had a couple of things. Um, just to point out, there, uh, Santa Claus, Claus doesn't have an E on the end. <laughs> just, and uh, the other thing um, that I wanted to ask uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the Director of Finance, 
Um, I noticed that when it comes to the early years, and it's included with um, um, organizations that are going to get a 90% discount, but currently they, they don't pay anywhere for the um, uh, spots that, where they hold their things. Uh, have you like ha liaised with them? Are they willing to pay any rent at all? or Because I wouldn't want to lose that program just because of the issue over a little bit of rent. I haven't heard anything. So maybe I can add, I actually talked to Louisa Artuzo about this and she actually put some money in the budget for it, so. For early years? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I, because. I mean, we can, we can confirm that again, but okay. I'm pretty because sure. Because that early years isn't run by the county right now. No, no, it's run through the. Um, Public health. Community health. Community, Community health. health. But yeah. that's funded, they're mm -hmm. funded through the county. So you think there yeah, is? Yeah, I believe that. Okay. I did have because that discussion. Because their policy has always been that they, they would provide the program, but the municipality had to provide a spot. But I think so the way that the county was funding those programs, not just here in other places as well, had changed right. okay. uh, in the way that the, the money was granted because there were some criteria behind it. And I did talk to Ms. Artuso about it, and she was planning to put money in the budget for it. Okay. So it was not going to be a, a problem for them. Okay, so can just we confirm be that. aware of that. Yeah, let's confirm, we'll confirm it because that. we don't want to lose that program in our yeah. municipality. Okay, thank okay. you. That's all. Anybody else with anything else on that? No, I'm no. fine. It's a good uh, yeah. report. It's consistent with what we Councilor Roth, you okay with it? I'm okay. 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 And I actually like a recorded vote on this, so. Madam? Okay. Well, it's been a little while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mayor Lever? Yes. Councilor Sapoulis? Yes. Councillor Fielding? Yes. Councillor Bulmer? Yes. And Councillor Rose? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I need to give it back to you. And we're time for the next delegation. So surprise, Mr. Buseman, you're up again. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, Mayor and Councillors. Um, Again, this is for uh, a zone change application that's discussed later in the agenda, and this is for the Dowdy property. I'd like to spend just a couple of minutes reviewing it again and be mm -hmm. open myself to uh, open to questions that you may have on this application. <coughs> this this drawing is just a big picture drawing of the property, fairly large property. And the intention was to is to have a severance in the corner. That severance was applied for almost two years ago, uh, this month. And um, at that time, the, uh, due to concern, some concerns, the Land Division Committee asked that we put it on hold, defer it, and deal with a couple of, uh, a couple of studies. Uh, it took a while, but those studies were done and, and submitted to the relevant agencies, including the, the GRCA, because one was an environmental impact study. Those studies uh, came back near the end of 2017, and um, a positive and as a result of that we asked that it go back to the County of Wellington Land Division Committee. Um, the Land Division Committee heard it on April 12 of 2018 um, and then just to convolute it just a little bit more the rules of planning sort of changed in that time so made the, the, the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe came into effect but there was an element of saying hey this application already started in 2016 let's look at it and add it in the context of that timing. Of those two studies one was an air quality and noise study because of capital paving down the road out of that came a number of recommendations two of which they recommended be, po uh, be implemented and two of which we decided to implement through a zone change. One was that the building should be one story and there was a bit of a, a two-story po dwellings possible only if the building envelope design meets the required sound level limits. And second, that the proposed dwelling must be at least 305 meters away from the capital paving resources. There's also a need for restrictive covenant for um, noise uh, uh, protection, things like air, air conditioning and so on, and that would be a, will be a restrictive covenant. Um, so yeah, those studies were done. We, we prepared a site plan to show where the house is gonna go and that it honors that 305 meter arc. Um, so basically the, uh, the zone change is somewhat administrative in nature to implement these two specific guidelines in, or recommendations in the zoning bylaw. Again, the distance from the noise source and the fact to keep it at one story. And if you saw in the, uh, the, propo the wording of the proposed bylaw, it addresses those two particular things. Um, 
So we're we're uh, suggest we're asking for approval of that uh, uh, zone change application, and I'm here for any questions that you may have related to it. Okay, thank you. Any questions for the delegation, Councillor Bomer? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon. Um, I guess the first question I had was how I hadn't seen any way how we were you were planning to address Mr. Shifley's concerns regarding the the um, intrusion of the the significant woodland lot where the the provincial policy requires 30 meter buffer you're proposing to actually build into the wood lot other than I think what I heard today was th the way you're going to address that is because the application was in before those new rules were in place is that that's the planning justification for that yes and and uh, and also just the um, and also that that we had the fact that we have GRCA approval on it and also the uh, fact and I have to get to the According to Abudin Associates, the author of the EIS, you know, the proposed severance and development would result in the removal of approximately 0.056 hectare of the 602 hectares uh, of the woodland, so quite small amount. Um, the portion of woodland to be removed is located along the northern edge uh, adjacent to the manicured grass. Connectivity of the total woodland complex would continue through the remaining woodland within the southern portion of the proposed severance. Therefore, the proposed severance development would not negatively impact the wider woodland or significant wildlife habitat. And, and I appreciate that, thank you. That's, that's where I'm just struggling with that, that um, the provincial policy on this is, is 30 meter buffer and, we're, and if we were talking a two meter buffer and you know, we'd still be talking a buffer. Is it possible, could I ask a question of the, the, the county planner if she's yes, here. Mrs. Onocente is here. Um, I noticed that in our in the county report, this was highlighted. Is this where does the county? What's the position right now on these applications that have come in before the policy is? I, I, I need some direction. I think on how to interpret the applicability of that policy that our consultant has identified as an issue. Um, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So the applicability of the provincial um, legislation is that it applies effective February 9th, 2018, and all planning decisions should be in accordance with that. Um, as Mr. Buseman has mentioned, this application did appear before the Land Division Committee, at which point it did grant um, provisional consent to, uh, to the create the lot, and this is a condition to fulfill that consent. So at the time of that um, uh, consideration for that application, county planning staff was actually not in support of the application due to the fact that it did not meet um, the, the requirements of the growth plan. So in terms of whether or not it is applicable, uh, it is a, a applicable um, legislation at this point in time, yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I was hoping you were going to be able to connect it back some way to before it, so it wasn't going to be applicable, but okay. Um, um, it, three, three, Mr. Marriott, we have had um, some um, uh, LPAT decisions, and we have had some clarification uh, from the province. Uh, yeah. and. Uh, um, we, you, you do also have um, an approval of um, um, the, the Land Division Committee, um, and so now this is sort of a, a second phase to, to that application, though. So um, oh, okay. that, that's potentially one way to consider it and look at it. Okay, so then if I just get these dates correct in my mind, the date of the provisional consent predated the, appli the application of the new regulations. The provisional consent was... Note the, through you, Mr. Mayor, the, the, the provisional consent was granted after February uh, 9th, um, 2018. So the, the growth plan uh, policies okay. were in force. Maybe I can add something yeah. here at the Land Division Committee. Uh, this had been there, as Mr. Buseman points out, some time before. And um, at that point, the concern was raised that the GRCA needed to grant approval to this before it could proceed. And rather than that being made a condition of the consent at that point in time, the decision was made to go out and consult with the GRCA and get their approval. When it came back to the Land Division Committee, the belief was that as this had been the Land Division Committee that asked for this specific requirement that had now been met, they considered it um, in light of the fact that the legislation had changed uh, to have really been in effect prior to the legislation. So to clarify, Mr. Chair, then the deferral was 
prior to the change in legislation? Much before. So before the, that's before the actual okay. legislation. Yeah. It was not that just the mapping, the deferral was before the legislation. Right. And, and yeah, so that's what I thought I heard. It was, yeah. it was a deferral prior to the provincial legislation being introduced and changed. Then a, then a decision, uh, the committee, and now the zone change. So I'm, I'm just trying to build that link back to a point where this... And, that, and that's right, Mr. Mayor, just to, just to further add, when the application was originally submitted in its original form, um, subject to the requirements of the EIS, um, what I've tried to detail in my report is that it, mm -hmm. it does meet the county official plan. Yeah. So at the time that it would have been first before, had that study originally been completed, we would have had something on record that said, in fact, it would have met those policies. So um, it's been an unfortunately long duration for this application to have been considered. Okay, that's that was all I was trying to establish is that link. Thank you very much. All right. Good feeling. Uh, thank you. Um, just to follow up on that a bit, I think I'm following this, but this is confusing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so if I could just, uh, maybe I need to hear it again, but so at this point in time, the planning staff does not support the application still? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, the, that's correct. Fundamentally, um, I think the zoning bylaw, to amend the zoning bylaw, um, uh, you know, we were asked um, to consider it in the context of provincial policy. In this case, um, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't meet that. Okay. Um, and that would be the consideration that was given by planning staff at the Land Division Committee as well. And if you review those reports, you'll see that um, based on all other information, it meets the requirements except for this new, new, uh, Woodland. the new policies. Okay. Effective February 2018. I guess where I'm trying to, but, but conservation has, they're okay with it? The they are. The conservation authority is, okay. is okay. Because that's kind of that's unusual. Okay. I guess that's why, where I'm not, where I'm getting confused. But I, I understand now it's just two different opinions, but I, I, I don't think I've ever seen conservation say okay over an environmental type thing. And Okay, I understand now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Spoulis. Yes, I have a question, Mr. Boosman. Um, is your client satisfied with the one story as opposed to having a conditional two story, in other words, two story subject to meeting necessary uh, noise bylaws? Yes, he is. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Roth. I have no questions. Thanks very much. Thank you. Oh, uh, just oh, could I have one, one follow-up question that, that came to yes. mind? Um, you mentioned in your presentation that it's a very large property, and so does that suggest that it's large enough that there was another location on the property you could have done this to avoid all of this? There is potential for another location. The client, the applicant, really wanted it in this location to protect the privacy of his existing house on his retained lot. Hmm. Um, if I if I could, I guess my perspective a little bit is that the application came in in, in 2016. The application was held. The Land Division Committee uh, wanted to make sure it was done well, so then they asked for the deferral. The deferral was done to address those needs and those studies. They all were all done and approved and so forth. Out of it all came uh, a number of recommendations, and the air, one of which was the air quality study. That air quality study had four things to recommend, two of which a decision was made to be done through a zone change. In a way, this zone change application has become administrative in nature in that all we're doing is trying to ensure that these two administrative things are on the property record. So the distance to the sound source and the fact that it's one story. <laughs> it's not really reevaluating the whole context again. It's almost like if council could pass a, a bylaw to say this property shall be um, applicable to two, these two restrictions, so then condition eight in this case could be done. It'd be as simple as that. But the decision and the appropriate process was to go through this zone change because that made the most sense. It gives the public better notification to say when they're thinking about buying this property, look at the zoning bylaw and the zoning bylaw says it has these two extra restrictions. So in a way, if there was another mechanism to implement these two conditions, that'd be great. Maybe a unique little bylaw, but it seems like the zone change bylaw was probably the best for the public and the most appropriate for this case. So does, I don't know if that helps to give rationale to sort of say this is fair to Mr. Dowdy and fair to the application. Okay. So 
have a motion moved by Councilor Bulmer and seconded by Councilor Roth that Council receives the delegation from Jeff Guzman of Van Harten Surveying, Inc. with respect to planning report, zoning bylaw amendment, application D14 slash GOU, Dave Doughty, 7129. All those in favor? That's carried. Yep, I think you're done. <laughs> Thanks. We're done. <laughs> Probably happy to hear that. 125. Sean McGaffey, with respect to planning report, Pamela and Philip O'Dell. <clears throat> Welcome. So, good afternoon, Mr. Mayor and members of council. My name is Sean McGaffey, I'm a planner and urban designer with Walker Knott Jurisovich Associates in Toronto, and uh, known Phil for quite some time now. Um, so, basically, I Similar to Mr. Buseman, I filed the delegations to be uh, asked to answer any and, questions. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Brief background: uh, the Odells purchased the the prop their main property and this property in starting around 2003 uh, for a total of 160 acres, give or take. Uh, it's split um, with an unopened county road allowance between the two properties, but there's a drive a single driveway access is both properties. Um, from that time, they have been operating a business out of one of these single detached dwellings on the non-residence non lot and uh, using the garage for storage associated with the business. Um, the business has grown quite substantially since that time. Uh, there's a need for new warehouse storage space on the site. Um, through that, they made a zoning amendment application to permit that and uh, that's what you have before you. Um, again, similar to Mr. Buseman's presentation, the application was submitted prior to the natural heritage policies coming into force. Uh, as you've heard from Ms. Innocente, all council decisions must now conform with the in-force in growth plan policies. To that end, um, where the building was to be placed was uh, identified on county mapping as a significant woodland. Um, since that time, uh, Mr. Shifey has been out on site and uh, determined that the an area uh, is not uh, does not meet the test of a significant woodland, and as such, we would be seeking to rezone that small portion uh, to permit the maintenance of the existing house, the maintenance of the existing garage, and the construction of a new warehouse and uh, an expansion area should the business require it in the future. Um, next step pending uh, approval of a zoning bylaw would be to go through site plan and there are also uh, given the nature of the uh, nature of the business being operated there are other federal and provincial approvals required in terms of uh, the chief firearms officer in the RCMP sure. so any questions for the delegation councillor Bulmer no, thank you seems straightforward okay. thank you councillor Fielding no I have no issues Councilor no I have no issues Councilor, I have no. he as well thank you a motion moved by Council Roth and seconded by Councilor Bulmer. The Council receives a delegation from Sean McGaffey with respect to planning report, Pamela and Philip O'Dell, zoning bylaw amendment D14 ODE 6615 concession one. All those in favor? That's carried. And all right. So a motion moved by Councillor Roth and seconded by Councillor Bulmer, the report FIN 2018-031 regarding the Municipal Performance Measurement Program report for 2017 be received. Any discussion on that? Um, I just have a question for the Director of Finance. I noticed that the criteria has changed dramatically over yeah. the years, that there's some that have disappeared completely from that. Uh, it's still built into the FIR report. Um, we. Do we know what they're going to require for reporting for next year yet, or if it's any different? Um, uh, I'm not aware of any changes. It's been consistent from 2014 to well, like no, the, the. It seems to me that some of the other items th that were more than the schedules that are there previously. There used to be yeah. yes, okay. significantly more reporting, okay. but they uh, cut it down significantly. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. No All those in favor. That's carried. Okay, administration department. 
have a motion moved by Councillor Sapoulis and seconded by Councillor Fielding. The report ADM 2018-032 regarding the proposed property standards bylaw be received. The council directs staff to proceed with holding a public meeting on November 15th, 2018 at 7 p.m. to obtain public input on the pro proposed property standards bylaws outlined in Schedule A to report ADM 2018-032 and the staff report back to council with the results of the public meeting. Discussion on that, Councillor Bulmer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I noticed in the report that um, the report mentions that the province has transferred the responsibility for the tenant standards to the enforcement of the tenant standards, tenant property standards to um, the municipal um, control. And so I would have, it would have been, I would have kind of expected to see that um, this bylaw would be to address um, properties that were subject to the Residential Tenancy Act. However, if you look at, I think it's uh, section 1.2 in the proposed bylaw, it says it applies to all properties in the township. So I guess my concern before this goes to the public, I, I wondered if it would be possible to divide this into two sections that those that apply as anticipated by the provincial legislation that to the residential tenancies, those that are subject to these standards under the Residential Tenancies Act and those that are not. So in other words, just, these things don't apply to all properties, but some of them apply to some, some of these apply to all properties, and, and mm -hmm. many of them only apply to those that are subject to the Residential Tenancies Act. Just to clarify that this isn't really, we're not impo imposing all this on all properties in the township. Well, actually, my understanding is that they, anyone who's renting property would be, uh, have the ability to make a complaint. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. So I wouldn't be able to predict what uh, properties are rented or not rented. Well, the like someone could rent their home. That's right. Right. And they'd be then subject to the Residential Tenancies Act. Uh, well, the, if someone rents their home, their te the tenant can make a complaint with respect to a property standards complaint. So, therefore, we only react on a complaint basis. That's correct. And it's not likely that someone who is actually the owner of the home is going to make a complaint about themselves. So the bylaw would apply when the case where a tenant would complain about an interior, T typically you're looking at your interior or exterior standards and the municipality would respond. You also respond in the case of when you get a complaint about a property and um, you, a neighboring property owner complains about the condition of a particular property. So I don't see where there's a difference in terms of the application of the bylaw. Well, because currently this, this suggests it applies to all properties. It does. And I can tell you my property does not comply with 90% of this. I, I have but no... it's on a complaint basis. Well, still, you know, I, I'm, all, I'm always of the mind, if we're not willing to enforce it, um, why create it? I think the objective of this was to differentiate between um, interior and exterior, especially for tenants. And I think it's... A, it's if, we, if we separate it out, then it's a clear if someone is anticipating renting a property, they can clearly see from the bylaw that if they're going to rent to someone, they know they will be subject to these standards before they rent it to somebody. Um, and I understand the other way is true too, if we apply it to everybody, but I think it's going too far if we apply this to all properties. Whether you split it in two or not wouldn't change how it's applied. I guess that's the part I'm struggling with to Councillor Bomer. Um, we are talking about this applying to all properties within the municipality. The only change is that for this Tenancy Act situation is the responsibility for enforcing that uh, is being transferred to the municipalities. That's right. But the requirement to comply is still there. It's just a matter of where the complaint would come from, I think, is... is um, That's right. So uh, under the current the way this is currently written, anyone could lodge a complaint against anyone for not complying with any of these because this is not contain an exemption. This is not clearly it identify. It does have one big exemption at the beginning about farm properties. No, for normal farm practice. Normal farm practice, yeah. And that's a difference. So what this is, this is in many ways, this is regulating a lot of natural forms and features in this township, um, which because it doesn't explicitly mention that some of these things really are intended for rental properties only, anyone could mischievously 
make a complaint against anyone who doesn't comply with any of these, be even if they live on, if it's not a rental property. And that's my concern, is the intent, I want to be able to provide the protection that we're supposed to provide to rental properties. And if we clearly indicate that there's a, a certain section of this applies to those things that are coming to the Res Residential Tenancies Act, that act also includes a list of exemptions of those properties that are not subject to the Residential Tenancies Act. Without that, we don't bring in those exemptions here either. So I can go through, there's a number of things in here that are, for one, inconsistent with existing county. I mean, the, the requirement to, to put out garbage every 10 days when we only have garbage pickup every 14 days, we're already out of compliance. Um, we're looking at things about dead trees, rotting wood, that naturally occurs in my forest, right? I think we're t what we're talking about here are dangerous situations in rental properties that we're trying to address as opposed to a neighbor making, I don't want to be subject to most of this. I don't think most of our residents want to be subject to this either. Well, again, it is on a complaint basis, and actually the current property standards bylaw um, is well out of date yes, and is not functional in terms of responding to the number of c complaints that we are receiving in this office regarding the conditions of properties. And um, so this isn't just to address the download with respect to residential um, tenants making complaints with respect to their landlords not upkeeping their property. It's to actually bring it in keeping with the current legislation, and it is to address the many concerns that we're receiving in this office as it relates to the standards of property and people filing complaints with respect to neighboring properties. <laughs> so um, if that. there are specific sections like the 10 days, I think it has to do with making sure that your garbage not, is not sitting out for a 10 day period. Certainly if council wants to extend that, with the, you're more, we can certainly make that change. But with respect to splitting the, um, the bylaw into two, I, I see that as adding confusion actually to the process. I see it as being more administratively um, burdensome to respond to and I think it just adds to confusion because typically as I indicated earlier when you're looking at a complaint that deals with um, a tenant the tenant is filing that complaint and because they're an actual tenant of a property and we respond to that complaint so whether it's in one bylaw separated out from your external um, property standards I, I, I just don't see how that's of benefit. So we're sort of going around on this here and what the real recommendation is just to receive this and then have a public meeting on it. So I'm just going to go on then and see how the rest of council feels. Yeah, sure. Okay, Councilor Palmer. Councilor Fielding. Uh, thank you. Um, I guess I always go back to it's fine to have rules, but can they, are they enforceable and do yeah. we have people to enforce them? Um, I, can, I, I can see both points of view of what uh, Councilor Bulmer and our CAO is pointing out. I guess in the end, it's really up to the public to tell us if they're having the same concerns and so on. Um, so I would be okay with going to a public meeting and then we always can tweak it or if, if it's totally inappropriate, we can change it around. So um, I was going to suggest though um, that perhaps, and I'll, if, I'll see if the CAO thinks is appropriate, but I was going to suggest that we um, could hold this public meeting just for efficiency of staff and council uh, prior to our meeting the week after, the prior to the council meeting, would that be appropriate? We can certainly do that as long as um, council is um, okay with starting perhaps earlier on That's that particular fine with day. Me. I'd rather have one evening than two. <laughs> okay. Councilor um, Smith. Um, I agree we should go to public first and then we can discuss it at length. But uh, I was going to suggest that perhaps this matter should be uh, an issue for the new council as opposed to this council. In other words, have the public meeting, meeting after the inauguration of the new council? Correct. Getting close to sort of the oh, start of the new year, too. January, um, like we're, 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 right now, you're looking at November 15th, and yeah. the Wednesday next council meeting, end of November, and and the next the new council comes in December, and that, I think that's a little bit yeah, too close. Yeah. Okay. Councilor Rowe, how do you feel? Yeah, I have a tendency to agree with that. I think this should maybe go before the new council. Um, We've been without it for a long time. I, I think there's a lot in here that's going to create a lot of public interest. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. Uh, that's what it's all about. So I think to have a public meeting before a council meeting may be a little, a little uh, ambitious. Cramped. Yeah. I think this could be one that we would have to use the community, community center for. Uh, 
because there is a lot of stuff in here that uh, I kind of agree with Councillor Bulmer that you know somebody tells me what kind of backsplash I have to have yeah. in my kitchen I have a problem with that and and this is the type of thing that we want discussed at a public meeting mm -hmm. it's going to take it's going to have time to do that so and that's what it's all about so I, I think that's the route we should go and what are we thinking so if we're thinking about altering the time then are we still okay with November or do you actually want to have the public meeting after the new council is in place my suggestion is after the new council is in place mm -hmm. Perhaps in January. I can tell you that January won't be feasible just with respect to your schedule as it relates to budget. So you're probably going to be looking at February or March because you have your you have your budget um, yeah. uh, meetings. I'm fine with that. As Council Roth uh, pointed out, that we've been so long without this. So. Okay. Yeah, so. so <clears throat> what are we thinking about a date then? Is everybody happy if we have a date then in March, the beginning of March? You fine with that, Councilor Fielding? Yeah, well, I won't be here. Won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine with me. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Councilor Bomer? If I'm here. <laughs> okay. Nothing's guaranteed. So, all right. So there's going to be, I think, um, as Councilor Roth pointed out, uh, an amount of uh, discussion that's probably going to take some time to go through this. We're going through this transition in the municipality as we continue to go through the transition from a much more rural area to a more urbanized area where uh, we have challenges uh, with people dealing with property standards on neighboring properties. And it's not just the urban people, um, but there are challenges as well between rural properties as well. So this does need to get addressed at some point in time, mm -hmm. but we need to make sure that it fits for Puss Lynch in the end. So be okay with that then? We'll just pick a date in March. Yep. yep. So then the only change to the resolution is the results of the public meeting. The date will change to something in March. I have that it says public meeting on November 15th. So we're going to change that to a March meeting. Yep, March 2019. And we'll just okay. set, set a set aside date. All right. All those in favor? That's carried. I have a motion moved by Councillor Fielding and seconded by Councillor Sapulis. The Council receives report ADM 2018-033, Cambridge East Water Supply Class Environmental Assessment Update. Councillor Bomer. Oh, I think we talked about this last We talked about Harden's report. Yeah. No, I don't think I have any questions. I'll, if I, I'm going to check, find my notes. Go ahead, carry on. If I find anything, I'll come back. Councillor Fielding. I don't have anything to add. Councillor Spoulos. Yes, uh, I'd like to um, uh, have a motion that we have uh, Wellington County staff uh, meet with uh, Rose staff and negotiate who's going to pay for the inspections and the development of the RMPs. In other words, uh, somebody has to do the work. It's mm -hmm. going to cost. And uh, the way I look at it, we're not causing the issue. It's the increased water taken by Cambridge t causing the issue. So let's see if we can get some sort of uh, cost paid for by the region person, of Waterloo. The region of Waterloo mm -hmm. is causing the, um, the, the, I don't want to say grief, but it's causing the. Sounds uh, like a reasonable request. <laughs> Councilor Roth? Yeah, I agree with that because this is a pretty large area. And uh, yeah, it's, the well it's, protection area is quite a bit smaller than the well head protection area. Mm -hmm. so, um, I think we have to be compensated for this somehow. Okay. Councillor Bomer? I, 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 think, I think the word that Councillor Sapoulos was looking for is the, the benefiting party may be right. mm -hmm. the appropriate one to pay for the protection that they're receiving. Mm -hmm. But I, I support the idea. Okay. Sounds good to me. Did you find any other notes? That's all I had okay. down. It's okay. the same thing. All those in favor then? That's carried. Planning and building. Okay. I have a motion moved by Councilor Spoulis and seconded by Councilor Fielding that the Council receive the July and August building reports. Any discussion on those? All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. I have a motion moved by Councilor Fielding and seconded by Councilor Spoulis that report. BLDG 2018-002 regarding the building bylaw results of the public meeting be received 
and the Council enact a bylaw to adopt the building bylaw in accordance with the bylaw attached as Schedule A to report BLDG 2018-002. Discussion on that, Councillor Bowman. Thank you. Yeah, I was pleased to see in the report that um, the concerns that were raised by Mr. Sloot that evening were heard and as, as much as possible were addressed in terms of, um, I think w what we heard that night was that they appreciated the, the discretion that our current building officials were, were using to apply some of the fees that had been applied arbitrarily before or in every case before. And I thought I read in here that that had been somewhat reflected back in the fees bylaw. So I thought that was, uh, that was a good outcome from that public meeting. And uh, I think it's good as much as if we, can, if we can get as much of Mr. Moore to rub off on future building officials, we'll all be in good shape. So. Yes. Councillor Fielding. Uh, yes, I, I thought uh, I'd like to commend Mr. Moore. For, I thought he really captured um, some of the concerns that were brought up, and uh, I'm very happy with what we have now. So, Councillor Willis. Well, I, I, uh, I second the uh, comments made by Councillor Fielding. It's a very okay. good report. Councillor Roth. I agree. Okay, me as well. I'm very glad to see the changes that were made as a result of the public meetings. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? It's carried. And I have a motion moved by Councillor Spoulis and seconded by Councillor Fielding that Council receives the planning report by the County of Wellington Planning and Development Department with respect to zoning bylaw amendment application D14 Cox. And the Council passes a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw 19 85 on the subject lands for Cox Construction Limited, part of lots 11 and 12, concession 4. And here we are. She's back. <laughs> Councillor Bulmer. Or did you want to say anything first? Uh, Mr. Mayor, no, not, not for this okay. one. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Bulmer, anything on the Cox one? No. Councillor Fielding? No, nothing. Councillor Spoulis? No. Councillor Roth? No. All those in favor? That's carried. Motion moved by Councillor Fielding and seconded by Councillor Sapoulis. The Council receives the planning report by the County of Wellington Planning and Development Department with respect to the Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application D14 DOU, David Doughty, 7129 Smith Road. The Council passes a bylaw to amend Zoning Bylaw 19 85 on the subject lands identified as 7129 Smith Road. So, again, do you want to make a presentation or are you just going to answer questions? I can just answer questions, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Councillor Bulmer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you for being willing to ask, ask, answer just one more, maybe one or two more questions. If I, the way I, I guess I'm looking at this, maybe things aren't always as neat and tidy as we'd like them to be. Um, but, so my perception is that this is sort of a, a fallout of, of a transition phase. And, and um, if we grant this, despite it not being completely in conformity with current provincial legislation, it's not like we're going to get another one tomorrow that would be in the same situation. Is that correct? So we're, we're not starting a whole pattern of ignoring provincial policy by approving Through, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, that is correct. And I, I think Mr. Buseman characterized it well um, when he explained that the conditions that were placed on the application at the Land Division Committee asked for a rezoning. The reason it asked for a rezoning is because we don't have a lot of other tools to ensure that these types of issues can be addressed. And so that's the, that's the zoning bylaw is the mechanism that we have available to us to ensure that these setbacks could be adhered to and, um, and, and creatively, um, uh, you know, the noise, the noise issues as well too. So it, it's, it's, it's sort of an unfortunate situation that the land division committee did not have a tool available to them um, to, to grant uh, or to create those restrictions that were asked uh, by, the, by the land division committee. And to my point of the of not being able to comply with the current provincial legislation, that's, this is not going to be an ongoing pattern if we, if we approve it today. Others aren't going to walk in the door and say, they didn't have to do it, therefore we don't have to do it. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to my understanding, we don't have any other situations like this where the Land Division Committee has granted an approval. Um, this is a quite a unique situation. I, a, as discussed, it's been around for quite a number of years and, and really got caught in a process. If you can appreciate the, mm -hmm. the environmental work, um, it can only be done at certain times of the year. So applicants are always constrained time-wise when they can do uh, much of that work that that is what um, uh, brought us before um, 
council today um, in that timing. So, um, I mean, I can I can appreciate um, sort of the practical implications of that. Okay, so we're ex we're exercising our latitude and to address a, a, an unusual situation, which seems reasonable. So, thank you. Okay, okay. Councilor Fielding. Uh, no, I I um, I think that I'm comfortable with the application, so um, I'll be happy to vote okay. on it. And I just want to uh, pick up on this uh, two-story issue. If uh, somebody purchases the property and they go through the necessary documentation that they can satisfy the noise requirements, I assume we'll have to go through this process and get a new bylaw in place. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, this, is a, this is a great question. Um, how do you, how do we deal with something like this where we have a stipulation out of a study? Um, that would need to be uh, um, carried over into the building permit phase. Really the only tool and mechanism that we have would be to place a holding provision on it and then require that that hold be lifted once the, the township is satisfied that that requirement can be met. It's, it, it would be very challenging to do um, something that would say, if in this situation you were looking for a two-story, the holding provision applies, but if you were only looking for a one-story, then the holding provision didn't apply. We would still have to place the H on the property and, and, and the situation would be the same this way. Um, and I spoke with the, the applicant, I spoke with Mr. Buseman and explained the challenge of the situation and, and the tools that we have and what we're limited by. Um, the, the reason that we wrote the zoning bylaws, I, I think I mean, almost as creatively as we did, I didn't want to end up splitting the zone as I did, but um, that is to ensure that, that we could uh, basically close this file and, and, yeah. and, and move it on. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Rowe. I have no question. All right, then all those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. I just want to clarify, was there a small change that had to be made to the bylaw that was presented to Council? Uh, not in this one, it's the Odell. Oh, it's the, the Odell one? one? Yep. Next one, okay, thank you. So a motion moved by Councillor Spoulis and seconded by Councillor Fielding. The Council receives the planning report by the County Wellington Planning and Development Department Zoning Bylaw Amendment D14 ODE 6615 Concession 1 and the Council passes a bylaw to amend Zoning Bylaw 19-85 on the subject lands identified as 6615 Concession 1. Let's start with what's the change? <laughs> so um, with respect to the, uh, the the third report, the Odell um, rezoning application, um, I, did, I did prepare a few notes and um, the applicant did a great job characterizing the situation and sort of how we arrived at, at where we did today. But um, there is um, there was an oversight in the zoning bylaw and um, we left the details in there for the exact proposal um, and, and um, in inadvertently left out an opportunity for an expansion. Um, so I had the opportunity to work with um, uh, the applicant's consultants and discuss what was that overall expansion in the area that they would like. We're satisfied. Um, the, the area um, is um, 1,783 square meters total um, for development. And I just, I wanted to just take a moment and just um, um, uh, assure council that our review did contemplate this. We got uh, very involved with the situation when we were able to identify an appropriate building area. And the zoning bylaw has been written in a way such that um, the development areas uh, uh, are outlined and established through the actual um, boundary creation of a zone. So we don't always, uh, you know, um, uh, provide an exact area. And then there's setbacks from that zone as well, too. And so within within those parameters, we would consider um, development in those areas as being appropriate. And um, the size and scale uh, can only be so large in that area. And so what the applicant has requested is that we actually put in an exact number um, of, of 1,783 square meters. Um, and just in terms of context, what does that look like in size? Um, it, many of the surrounding farm buildings in that area um, exceed uh, 2,000 square meters in area. So it is it is a small, still a small scale scale development that would allow the applicant to proceed with their um, uh, recognizing the existing buildings on site plus their proposed 512 square meter. Uh, new building and then um, provide for the opportunity to consider an expansion in the future. So that would be the um, w one of the changes. And then the other is, unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to do a little bit of a back and forth with the bylaw. The applicant has um, provided, I think, a little more detail on the 
the, the, the description of the uses um, that really uh, avoid us from introducing a definition into the zoning bylaw for firearms distribution, um, but clearly establish the uses that um, have been requested. And, and it's really, uh, the, the changes, I would consider them to be minor, but it just more refines what, um, what they are proposing. So if, um, if, if, if council um, looks to um, accept that, then we could prepare that bylaw um, for council to, to reflect those changes. Councilor Bulmer. I have no concerns, thanks. Okay, Councilor Field. No, I'm fine. No, I'm fine. Councilor Rose. Fine as well. Fine with me too. All those in favor? That's carried. So that'll just include the amendment. Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to sign it or you Yep, go ahead. It? I'm going to put it on. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, roads and parks, we don't have anything. Recreation, no mayor's updates. Any notices of motion? Oh, I thought you were holding up your hand there for a minute. No, I just moved my <laughs> Many minutes. <laughs> Municipal announcements. Councillor Bomer. Uh, yes, just one uh, relates to the Green Legacy Committee. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, Mr. Mayor, uh, Paul Day, one of the yes. drivers behind the Green Legacy and Trees from Mapleton, uh, passed away a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. uh, a year and a half ago. And the county has graciously donated a bench in his memory. Uh, that's going to be, I guess, unveiled at right. the park in Drayton. And oddly enough, it's, it's Thanksgiving Monday. Uh, the, the date I received was uh, October 8th, which I thought was unusual. And I had to, 11 a.m. Do you have the same date? Uh, in just a second, let me look. Monday, October 18th, yep. But oh, they, 18th you got. Oh, sorry, 8th, pardon me, yeah, at 11 a.m. as well. But they may have selected that because of the because public of the being available, because right. it's 11 o'clock on what would otherwise be a work day. Right. So uh, I, I expect you're, you're likely to be there as the warden, and I would encourage anybody who's a fan of the mm -hmm. Green Legacy. Paul Day was a driver of that program, very enthusiastic. Very much supporter. so, yes. Uh, <coughs> from Goldstone, Wellington County. I think it was Goldstone was the name of the town, was it not? Yeah, uh, that I don't recall. Yeah, so, anyway, that's all I have. All right, Councilor Field. Thank you. Um, I uh, attended on Saturday a stewardship uh, appreciation day uh, at. It was held at Mountsburg. It was for Hamilton and Halton Conservation Associations, and there were several um, people within the watershed. There was no one from Pusslinch recognized, but it was a good day, and it's really amazing to see. Uh, you know, there's so many people that are so passionate about keeping. Um, you know, keeping things in good environmental health and so on. So it was nice that people like that get recognized. It was a good morning. So, mm -hmm. and Mountsburg is looking, starting to look beautiful right now. And I'm sure most of our conservation areas are. So go out for a walk and uh, enjoy the trees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Councilor Spoulis. Yeah, just uh, a, a note I received from Grand River Conservation Authority. They have trees and potted trees available for order. So mm -hmm. they're not free. You got to pay for them, yeah. but they are. Some of them are three foot high type of thing, so they got a good sturdy uh, growth already on them mm -hmm. for consideration of anybody's interest. Oh, good. That's your growth. I have nothing. Sorry. Oh. I just, one thing I probably should mention, I don't think we mentioned at the last meeting that uh, some of our trees got knocked down in the car accident yes. out I in Morris. Yes, a picture to the CA. Yeah, and uh, uh, fortunately, you know, they're not valuable enough to be covered through insurance or anything, but. Um, I'm hoping maybe the landscaper who's local would uh, look at helping us out with those. It's a shame to see that happen, but at least no one was seriously injured because it right. was quite a bad situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we are looking into it. Yep. Perhaps the green legacy. But, uh, <laughs> the bigger ones. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Green? Uh, just on that, Mr. Mayor, uh, I have uh, spoken with... Uh, our landscaper that did install it, uh, he's guaranteed me replacements in the spring. Oh, oh nice. Oh. For that area. That's, That's very good of him, yeah. Could we send him a thank you note for that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. So just on that, uh, oh, sorry, Council Road? Did, nope. You didn't have a, okay. Um, the, the picture included the regional Waterloo cruiser that actually right. took them out, and I thought that maybe they'd be responsible, because after all, we know <laughs> municipalities, they always end up footing the bill. 
Um, so just uh, the big thing, of course, was the fire department's 50th. It was a great turnout. I'm glad to see everybody there. Um, participation by uh, always with our, our both our MP and our MPP and all of the kids running around with big smiles on their faces. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing like a group of young kids playing with water hoses and climbing <laughs> in their trucks to get them get, catch their attention. Um, I attended a Nestle tour last week that they had for all the candidates, and it was certainly good to see a few newcomers from Guelph show an interest in the actual facts surrounding the facility there. So I was glad to see that, uh, that transpire, and that's all I had. So I have a motion moved by Councillor Fielding and seconded by Councillor Sapoulis that the, council, the following bylaws be taken as read three times and finally passed in open council. A, being a bylaw to appoint a building official for the corporation of the Township of Puss Lynch, and B, a bylaw to amend bylaw number <coughs> 3 12, being a bylaw to authorize speed limits. Any discussion on those? All those in favor? It's carried. Sorry, did you want to say I something? I just wanted to let you know that the one with respect to the appointment of the building official, it also has, there's been added verbiage, if I can say, just to um, repeal Ryan's appointment. Yes, okay, just so that today. you know, yeah. Vote me if I'm going to call a vote before. <laughs> Sorry. I have a motion moved by Councillor Spoulis and seconded by Councillor Fielding. The following bylaw be taken as read three times and finally passed in open council. Bylaw 055-2018 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council for the Corporation of the Township of Puss Lynch at its meeting held on the third day of October 2018. All those in favor? It's carried. And a motion moved by Councillor Fielding and seconded by Councillor Spoulis. The council hereby adjourns at 2.07 p.m. All those in favor? That's carried. Just want to welcome the group from the University of Guelph. Glad to see you here. Hopefully it was worthwhile spending your time here this afternoon. Entertaining. Thanks for coming. I oh, <laughs> urge other wow. students to come as well. We're always pleased to have them. And for everyone else, before we see you again, I remind everybody there's no other meeting in October. So the next time we get together will be in November. The election will be over. So good luck to all those running in the election. Tissues or tiaras, whichever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.